And now, the show that bridges the gap between faith and business. Welcome to Bottom Line Faith. Hello, everyone. This is Ray Hilbert. I am your host here at Bottom Line Faith. This is the program where we have the amazing, amazing privilege to travel the country north to south, east to west, sometimes physically and sometimes online like today, where we're going to have an amazing conversation. And we're going to have that discussion. In fact, our tagline here at Bottom Line Faith is eternal business, real life. So what we do with these leaders and our guests here at Bottom Line Faith is we hear from some of the most amazing experts and thought leaders, subject matter experts in our country, on living out our faith in the marketplace. And so today is going to be a fun time. I can't wait to just introduce you all to our guest today. He is an author, a speaker, an evangelist, an ordained minister, and really a man after God's own heart, the author of several books, including Men Unplugged, and including another book, Faith Without Fear, How to Share What You Believe with Confidence and Power. Folks, joining me from the Dallas, Texas area, Jeff Jarena. Jeff, welcome to Bottom Line Faith. Ray, thank you so much for having me as a guest here. I'm truly honored and humbled. And I tell you what, I'm super excited to get to know you better, Ray, and your audience. And just quick correction here, it's Faith Without Fear was the book, and the show was Men Unplugged. And you know what? Now I need to write a book called Men Unplugged, so I'm going to do that. <laughs> you know, that that is absolutely my—that is exactly the way you described it, the way it's on my introduction form here, and I I'm just— wrote it, read it, uh, read it backwards. So that's my flub. So thank you for that. It's the Lord speaking <laughs> to you. I got to write the book now. <laughs> okay. Well, well, Jeff, y- you and I share a passion for helping people become equipped to live out their faith. And that's, you know, that's what we're about here at Bottom Line Faith. But, and I want to get into that. I want to get into some specifics of that and how you equip leaders and in sharing their faith in the marketplace. But help our audience understand a little bit about your background, how you came to faith, and kind of what life looks like for you these days. Well, that's a great question. Um, and I'll try to keep this short. I will tell you that I grew up in the church, Ray. But here's the thing. I didn't know what salvation was about. I thought it was based on good works. I thought I had to do more good than bad. And so I just kind of lived my whole life, you know, doubting my salvation was secure. I just had this worry all the time. And, uh, and I don't think it's something I was uh, taught necessarily. I think it's just something somehow I subconsciously picked up. I don't, I don't know why, but anyway, so I, my parents, both my parents have been married now for over 51 years, which is a blessing. Uh, My wife and I, Amy, we've been married for over 11 years, and uh, we have two kids. Now, I want to, I'm going to tell you how old I am, and then I'm going to tell you how old my kids are, and you do the math, okay? All now, right, all right. You're going to find out how tired I am all the time. So I'm 48 years old. Yeah. My daughter is nine, and my son is two and a half. So I feel like I'm beat up most days. <laughs> but but so, I mean, that's how I feel. So, but anyway, and, and I think in, in your audience, maybe they know this story or have heard about it from their friends, you know, maybe they can relate with this, but, you know, as I said, I just grew up thinking that I had to do all these good things. And so what happened was I started to hang around the wrong crowd when I went to college. Okay. By doing that, I became the wrong crowd. And so mm-hmm. I started doing a bunch of stuff I shouldn't do. I chased the world. I was seeking uh, joy and happiness and, and things that were temporary that I thought would give me this everlasting joy, which we know it does not. It's only found in a personal relationship with Christ. And so when I was 26 years old, I got into a severe car wreck. I basically, I shouldn't have been driving. Okay. It was late night. So if you, you know, plug in the holes there, you'll figure out what I was doing. But um, I just flipped my car. It went up 10 feet up in the air hit a column. I can show you to this day where it hit. I can show you to this day the underpass that it hit. My car flipped over on the left side, drug 50 to 100 feet on the asphalt. The driver's side window busted through and the whole left left side of my body drug on that asphalt. Mm. Okay. Now, praise the Lord that he saved my life. Okay. So, but what happened was I got this enormous scar on my left hand. To most people, it would be no big deal. But the enemy, Ray, used that to tell me I wasn't worthy. I wasn't acceptable. I wasn't lovable. You're an ugly duckling, all these different things. And so what happened was I developed a form of OCD called body dysmorphic disorder. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Now here's, it's basically, if you see a lot of bodybuilders and they're working out all the time and, and, and the, so that's this body image issue is what it is. Well, for me, it was, if I saw any scar cut, whatever to somebody else, it would look like a little, um, a little scrape to me. It was like this massive mountain. Hmm. Okay. I would obsess over it. So I, um, I would, I, w I was on antidepressant medications. I was on OCD medications. I went to psychiatric counseling. Um, not because I'm crazy. Maybe some people would say I am, but more just to get to where I wasn't um, harmful to myself because I had these suicide thoughts for four years of my life. And so basically none of that stuff was working right. Nothing. I was making a lot of money. I used to work at telecommunications when I got out of my undergrad in college making a lot of money there. And for those uh, in your audience that work telecom, it's pretty good paying industry. Yeah. But none of that helped. And so finally I went to my parents and said, mom, dad, I need some help. And they sent me to a Christian counselor. And the second day he asked me two questions, Ray, that changed my life. And he said, first question was, did you, he said, do you know that God loves you? And I thought, well, what kind of a question is that? If God loved me, then why would all these bad things happen to me? And uh, he said, did you ever start to think that maybe the bad things that happened to you were from your bad choices? I was like, wow. I didn't like that answer, Ray, because it put me on the spot. Yeah. And But I was looking at my clock, my watch, and I was like, I have 45 minutes left to go in this session. I think <laughs> this guy, I'm like, I got to get my money's worth. So, I, you know, I could, I could just feel I was uncomfortable. I listened to him. Then he asked me the second question that changed my life. He said, Jeff. Do you know that when you die, you go to heaven? And Ray, I didn't know the answer to that. I doubted it. He shared the gospel with me, placed my faith in Christ in 180 degrees instead of running away from God. Now I'm running to God, and my life since then has been so much better. And through a series of steps, I started doing men's ministry and speaking, and then yeah. now to where we are now, the Men on Plug show, and then my side business. So that's kind of wraps up everything to where we are right now. Okay, so I, I don't want to uh, move on just quite yet. So from the time you had that accident until the time you were sitting in that counselor's office and you were asked those two transformative questions, what, what was that time frame? And you've mentioned, you know, you had battling with depression and so forth, but how, how long was that time frame between the accident and that conversation? Oh, that was four years. Four that years. Was four years that I was, I mean, it was like, I was at the last thread of the lap, last rope of my life. I mean, that's how bad it was. Yeah. So uh, part of the reason, Jeff, I'm asking that question is my hunch is there's somebody listening, even though we're just getting started in our conversation here, there's somebody listening right now that um, they may be feeling that. They may be feeling hopeless, um, depressed, like what is going on here? Everything's falling apart. Um, so reflecting upon that four-year window and what you learned from that time to now, what words of encouragement would you offer to somebody who's in that really deep, dark place in their life right now? Well, I would tell you the first thing that, that I used to tell people that would tell me this, I would say, look, people used to tell me all the time when I was depressed, don't worry about it. You have nothing to worry about. You're okay. If, if somebody's there and somebody's telling you that, that makes it worse. I would tell you this, there is only one individual that knows what you're dealing with and knows how to deal with it and knows how to make it better. And that is Jesus Christ. I do know that without a shadow of a doubt, because after I placed my faith in Christ, Ray, no more medication, no more OCD, no, no more of this stuff. It was like this. I don't know if you can hear that through the mic, but it was yeah, just like yeah. instantaneous. Just my life turned around. Now I still have bumps and I still have trials and hills and valleys and all these different things, but I know at the end of the day that God loves me. And, and there was one verse that helped me. Um, there's several, but let me share two of them. The one that I think was so big for me was 1 Samuel, 6, 1 Samuel 16, 7. It says, man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Okay. Now I found out that that actually has a double meaning. And the double meaning here is, first of all, God is more concerned with the inside, our heart. He's more concerned with that yeah. than he is externally, than he is with our resume, than with how we look or how we speak, whatever that is. 
And then secondly, when you're speaking with somebody and you're, maybe you're speaking to your, your team, your employees, whatever that is, or, or to a, um, a customer, you may be thinking, wait a second, they're not getting, they're not getting what I'm saying, but you don't know what is radiating in their heart right there. Only God knows that. And so then the, the second verse for me was Psalm 119.32 says, I run in the path of your commands for you set my heart free. And I think for me, after I placed my faith in Christ, Ray, I realized that that's what he did. As he set my heart free, I was shackled by what I was thinking. I was shackled by what the enemy was telling me. And if you right now are, are in a tough spot or you know somebody that's, that's in a tough spot, I would tell you to point them to Christ and let them know that he loves them as they are, no matter what, past, present, and future. So I hope in some way that that helps, Ray. That's fantastic, Jeff. And so, you know, in, in reading the notes that I'm taking, you know, it's, it's about that God's looking at the heart, and then as you from 1 Samuel 16, 7, God's looking at the heart, and then as you said in Psalm 119, 32, He's going to set your heart free. And so as I was listening to you share that, there you talked about that four-year period of time when you looked at that scar. I think you said it was your left hand that was scarred. Compare and contrast for us what you would see when you looked at your hand in that four-year window of time versus what you see when you look at that hand now, kind of a before and after. Man, you need to be a counselor. This is really good. (laughs) That's a good question. I mean, seriously, that is. Um, You know what's funny is now I don't even look at it, number one, okay? Secondly, when I look at it now, I'm like going, are you kidding me? I was actually worried about that. Yeah. It's almost like the Lord, he changed my perspective. You know, he changed my vision of how I saw myself. And so that's how I am now. Back then, I couldn't be around a mirror. I mean, they call body dysmorphic disorder what I had. They call it the broken mirror. Okay. Because you just can't be around mirrors. And so I would look at it and it represented to me, Ray, disgust, shame, unforgiveness, guilt, um, ugliness. And these are all pointed at me. Okay. But what happened was I turned them towards God and towards everybody else. So hopefully that will show you the different, the correlation between the two. Yeah. And what I'm taking away from that is just a reminder that we all have scars and those scars that happen to us uh, that we don't process through the lens of Christ and our walk with Him, the devil's going to use the, the pain, the scars to discourage us, to cause us to think that we're less than worthy, that we're not the king's son or daughter, and so forth. But then after the relationship with Christ, he sees we see those scars as part of what shaped and formed us to become Christ-like. That's So it's the same experiences, it's the same scars and pain, it's just what is the perspective that we're looking at. That's at least, as I'm taking my notes, you, you, those weren't your exact words, but that's what I take from that. Would, how would you respond to that? Man, I would say amen, brother. I don't know how much more I can add to that, but when you were sharing that, the thing that I was thinking of was this, is that God died for us. He yeah. died for you as you are. It says in Romans 5, 8 that God demonstrated his own love for us, That and while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It didn't say while we used to be sinners or while at one time it says while we were still, meaning that God meets you where you are right now, no matter what. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. Well, Jeff, before we go on much further, uh, I'd just take a couple of moments and and um, tell us a little bit about your program. Tell us uh, what you're looking to accomplish, maybe even how you see it in synergy with what we're doing here at Bottom Line Faith. But help our guests to understand a little bit more about what you're doing uh, day to day, and then how can our listeners check out what you're up to? Well, men unplugged. What the, what we try to do is um, on the show, it's sim- similar to yours. But it's a different, I think it's a different angle, right? It's a different, it's a different reach. So what we do is we, on the show, as I interview top Christian leaders, much, much like you, guys like Kevin Sorbo, Josh McDowell, um, Mercy Me, JC Watts, Pro Athletes, things like that. And what we try to do each week is we're picking a specific topic. 
that, uh, that a man is going to deal with. And now I will say this, that we have a lot of women that listen to the show. So yeah. there's nothing that we say that men and women can't listen to. In fact, it, it, it's, it's a lot of both, but um, we'll take issues like parenting. We'll take issues like marriage, um, how to find and live your purpose. We'll do stuff on how to share your faith, defend your faith, uh, leadership in the marketplace. So we're taking all these different things that we deal with on a daily basis. I mean, if you think about it, um, I would bet that most of your audiences, leaders, marketplace leaders, entrepreneurs, whatever, they wear a lot of hats every single day. And so what we try to do is we're coming at it with every angle that we deal with and we're discussing that topic, but not just discussing it, but giving specific calls to action with biblical truths that when you leave that particular episode, you're walking away going, I can apply this in my life today and actually be successful in that particular aspect of my life. And so we do that. We have online courses and I'm developing more as we speak right now. Obviously the books like my book, Faith Without Fear and, and the Purpose book. And, and, and there's another one I'm writing right now, but that and then the, the conferences that we have, the group training, and then a lot of the resources. So the way I try to look at it is it's the one-stop shop for men. Yeah. Instead of looking everywhere for Christian men that you want to live as a warrior of Jesus Christ, come here, get unplugged to that stuff that's weighing you down so you can plug in and recharge to what really matters. Plug into your relationship with Christ if you're married and have kids, plug into the, to those relationships so that by doing that, you can recharge and live out God's given assignment for you. Yeah. Okay. And what's the best way? Is there a website, a Twitter feed, a handle? What's the best way? Yeah. Man, I can't believe I missed that. I usually tell people that. <laughs> it's okay. That's what <laughs> I'm here for. <laughs> I got carried away. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. The website is menunplugged.net. I could give you the social media, but I just want to make it simple. Go to menunplugged.net. That's it, .net, menunplugged.net. There you have it, folks, menunplugged.net. So, Jeff, I'd like to talk a little bit. Um, you mentioned you're writing a, 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 a new book, uh, not finished yet, but your latest book released in 2019 titled Faith Without Fear, How to Share What You Believe with Confidence and Power. What does our audience need to understand? You know, as, as marketplace leaders, business owners, leaders, executives in the marketplace— what are some of the things that you would like to make sure that we understand? Um, maybe some of the lies we're told or whatever, but what does that mean, you know, faith without fear and sharing what you believe with confidence and power? Tell us more. Well, the gist of it is it's, it's to help any believer, regardless of their age, their, their vocation, whether or not they're in full-time ministry or not, their biblical knowledge, spiritual gifts, whatever that is, to help every believer confidently, easily, naturally share the gospel of Jesus Christ to anyone they come across, whether it's a friend, coworker, whether it's um, a manager of theirs, whether it's a customer, whatever that is, and to do it in a way with confidence and power. And, and the power part here is a dual meaning. It's because, number one, the Holy Spirit is leading the way. He's guiding us, right? He's the one that really wins people to Christ. And then the second part of that, when you're thinking about power, if you understand, if you know how to share your faith, which, um, Ray, this book came about because I didn't know how to share my faith. Mm. I came to know Christ in 2001. And for four or five years, uh, four to five years, I would tell people how, how excited I was about what Christ did for me. Yet they would go, this is great. How do I get this free gift? And it was like, I just left them hanging, you know, because nobody was teaching me. I wasn't learning it. And so I feel like for me in Christendom, what we need to do is we need to get this conversation back up in, in the conversation because, look, we're not being taught, okay? So if we're not being taught, if you're not being taught how to do your job, how are you going to get better? It's just like anything. It's just about um, leadership or giving a speech or maybe you're an engineer, whatever that is. You had to learn how to do that particular skill set, that particular occupation, I say the same thing for evangelism. We have to learn how to do it. I mean, Jesus trained the disciples for three years. They were with him every step of the way. They had to get training from the Messiah. If they had to do it, we had to do it. We, had, we need to do it ourselves. And I will, I will say this. When you get trained, when you get prepared, you can tell I'm getting excited. I'm not trying to talk at anybody. I'm just saying that I, when I came to know Christ, like I said, for four or five years, I didn't know how to share my faith. 
but then I learned how to do it. And it was like this amazing thing that happened because once you share your faith with somebody, once you share the hope of Christ, there's three potential miracles that can happen. And it's just amazing to me when you're in those situations, because you, what happens is you draw closer to God. You're reminded of your personal story of salvation. And then you can be a source of encouragement to others. I mean, it's, that's really what the book is about. And it, and it helps you to remove any fear that you have about sharing the gospel so that no matter where you are, you can confidently share your faith, share the good news to anyone at any time. I think I rambled on there. I apologize for that. No, so that, and I'm actually, I'm not quite done with that yet because uh, maybe it's just my notes, but I t you talked about three potential miracles. Um, you growing closer to God. I think the second was you can encourage someone. And did I catch the third one? The third well, miracle? Actually, those are things that can happen. Those are benefits. The three miracles of when you share the gospel, here are the three miracles. Number one, you actually share the gospel. The gospel is actually shared. Okay. The second miracle is that somebody gets to hear the good news of Christ. Okay. And the third miracle is when they place their faith in Jesus Christ. So there's potentially three miracles of just you sharing the hope of Christ with somebody else. That's fantastic. Okay. So um, I'm still not ready to, to move on quite yet. So um, cause I, I deal with enough, um, followers of Christ, particularly business owners, business leaders in the marketplace. And there's all sorts of, um, things that come into their minds, obstacles. Um, just, I'll mention two or three, and I'd like you to respond to that and see if there's some you would add to it. And then we'll maybe discuss some of the, um, applications to that. One is, um, I don't know how to share my faith to your point earlier. I've never been trained or equipped What's that line? When have I gone too far? When have I not gone far enough? What, what do I say is one thing. Secondly is, what can I legally do in the marketplace? You know, if I've got employees or coworkers, can I share my faith or evangelize in the marketplace? And number three, don't I just like live it and they'll see it? And isn't that sharing my faith? So those are three things that come to me. In other words, is it beyond just our lifestyle and how we respond or behave in situations? Are there, are there actually verbal equipping that needs to be done and verbal sharing? So can you maybe respond to some of those things that I just laid out there? Well, I hope if I don't address all those, that was four actually, Ray. I was counting. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm just no, it's probably three. Okay. So I'm going to see if, if I don't address this, please let me know. And yeah. I I'll definitely will do that. Um, but I would say, I think where I want to start here is when we talk about the marketplace, I mean, the marketplace is anything, whether it's in the corporate environment, whether it's just you as an entrepreneur, or you're speaking to a customer, a vendor, whatever that is. I would say number one about the marketplace is I don't think I can answer that for you specifically for every individual because you know when the time is right, when it's appropriate. But I would say if you're in the corporate environment, um, obviously a lot of times that's probably going to be tough to do. You don't want to be doing that during a meeting and because the you know, the manager remember going, wait, what, what are you doing here? But I think there is a time to where you could, where you could have that relationship with somebody, a business relationship where you can say, Hey, you know, maybe you've gone to lunch a couple of times with that individual. Now to me, if you're having lunch with somebody, that's not on company time. You can easily without any repercussion at all, share your faith with somebody. And the way that I would start it out is um, I have a chapter in the book called just ask. Most people think that they don't know how to start a spiritual conversation. But in this chapter, I actually tell you that's not correct because most people know how to start a spiritual conversation. And, the re and how you start a spiritual conversation is just by simply asking the individual about them, about their family. Maybe you talk about a car or their home they just bought or something like that. The idea is you're getting them to talk about themselves so that they can see that you care about them. And if they see first that you care about them, the greater the chance that they're going to see that the God of the universe, their creator, also cares about them. That, to me, is the beginning point here. Okay? So I hope I addressed the part about the marketplace. Yes. Um, and, then, and I want to add here to this because I've had this several times. Uh, can I share this story? You have a minute? 
Of course. Two minutes to share the story. I don't yeah. know how long we got. I want to share this story here. I now I don't know if your audience knows here, but my side business here, it's kind of pays for the ministry stuff right now that I do. Um, that is, I've had a Christmas lighting business for 18 plus years. Okay. It's been like the thorn in my side, Ray. It's the killer. It's the thorn. Christmas in my side. lighting, like doing yeah. outdoor lighting and exactly. Homes. Oh, exactly. wow. I need to hire you. Yeah. No, well, I would, I would do that, but I have, I wholesale <laughs> the lights and I have, okay. I have guys that we do companies, yeah. you know, business yeah. stuff like that. So anyway, um, I've had, I had this customer for five to seven years and he called me up. I was finishing up a job. I didn't want somebody else to do this job. I was just doing, it was like mid December. And it was, I was frustrated because this one project wasn't going well. And this guy called me up and said, Hey, you have this issue. And I'm like, Oh, well, you know, this is all you need to do. He did. They said it's working, but can you still come out? I was like, yeah, it'll be $40, you know, labor charge. That's in the contract. And he said, no, that's not right. I, I, you know, I, I paid you a lot of money. And the gentleman that was with me, he said this, I said, I, he said, I think the Lord wants you to share the gospel with me. Now, Ray, I was having a bad Christmas season. I was having a bad day. And I said, yeah, I'll do it, but he's going to have to pay me 40 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. That was a bad attitude. Right. So I just kind of wrestled with it, finished that project. I went to go get some loose items, you know, some last minute Christmas items for my wife and daughter. Our, our son, Eli, wasn't born yet. And you ever had those moments where the Lord just hits you upside the head, convicts you when you're walking at the store and you're like going, oh, man. And this, this is what the Lord told me. I was walking around the store getting some last minute items, Christmas items. And the Lord just said, Jeff, I want you to soften your heart to one customer today. Hmm. That hurt. <laughs> I just stopped in the store and I was like, really? And the Lord said, you know who I'm talking about. I said, God, for $40, I'll do it. <laughs> he said, no, <laughs> for free. I called the guy up, said, I'll be over there um, about five, 10 minutes. It's like 10 minutes away. Went over there, immediately knew what the problem was. The problem was rabbits chewed the wire. Okay. And I said, see, this is why I should charge this, this labor charge. And I said, but since I'm here, I'm not going to worry about it. You're a great customer. And you know what he said to me, Ray? He said, Jeff, I've been meaning to ask you where you go to church. <laughs> and what do I see? I see my buddy and, in, 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 you know, in your vision, you know, you picture these things. I see my buddy and I see my buddy's face going, I told you so. Mm -hmm. I told you so. And I said, it's funny you say that because I was just talking to a buddy of mine and this is what I need to share with you. I'm here to tell you that that customer came to know Christ that day. Now I'm, wow. I say that story because I'm not boasting by what I did. Yeah. Cause Ray, I had to get my heart right before I went over there. Yeah. But I will say this, getting your heart right means you have to have the proper motive. Yeah. And I believe your audience has the proper motive. It, they would not be listening to your show, right? If they didn't have the proper motive and the proper motive is, we're not doing this to tell others, hey, look what I did. We're doing this because we are so zealous and overjoyed for what God did for us that we want others to know the same hope. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, um, Jeff, what's powerful, there's so many things powerful about that story, and thank you for sharing that, is, as I said, and, and I say in every opening of every episode here at Bottom Line Faith, that our tagline is eternal business and real life, right? And that we're, we, as followers of Christ who are in business and in leadership, we have this ongoing tension all the time that we're, we're seeking the Lord and spiritual uh, growth and witness and impact and kingdom building and all those things, and at the same time, we have businesses to run, we have payroll to meet, we have issues and challenges and family and sickness and finances and all that. So in that moment, and I want to just go back to that story, because somebody's listening right now, and God's touching their heart just like He was touching yours, and you're just like, God, you know, really? Really? And you're wanting to invoice that 40 bucks, and yet you ultimately learn there was another spiritual story being shaped here. How would you encourage someone who's listening right now who's in that place about, God, do I, is that really what you want me to do? Because I've got to run the business. How would you coach and encourage someone who's got that kind of internal wrestling going on right now? Wow, man, you're just 
throwing out some curveballs at me. This is a good question. <laughs> um, I, I tell you, when you were sharing that, I was just thinking three words, be the light, be the light. We have to be the light. And it's not always easy to do. You know, there's a lot of times that, you know, in specific situations, you don't want to shine the light at that one. You're like, wait a second, I need some light towards me here. And what yeah. I mean by be the light is we have to be running to the light every day. You know, and I'm talking about the light of the world, John 8, 12, Jesus Christ. If we're running to the light every single day, it's going to be much easier to be that light. And when you're struggling in that moment with, you know, man, I, I, this is really tough here because I feel like I'm really going over out of my way, really feel like I'm bending my back. I'm not getting anything back. I mean, as business owners, as leaders, we want this law of reciprocity. We want things yeah. to come back, right? If you're giving something out, you're, you're doing more. You want something to come back. I totally get that. But I, I, I want to come back to this. This is something I say, and I think I'm probably going to write a book on this. Maybe you can help me on this, right? Your purpose does not necessarily equal profit. That's it. Your purpose does not always equal profit. And our main purpose is we always have to focus on the eternal perspective. So 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18 says, I do not look at um, things that are, that are temporary, that are, that are going away, but yet I keep my focus on the eternal Always yeah. on the eternal. And if that's what we're supposed to do, then all this temporary drama, this, I didn't get my $40, didn't get the $200, whatever that is. Yeah, that stuff hurts, but it hurts temporarily. You know, what is the bigger impact? The bigger impact is if you have a chance right then to give somebody the hope of Christ, I think we need to do it because you know what? There's, it's going to impact them more and better than, you know, $40 taken from them. Yeah. Yeah, without question. I think it's a great uh, segue, Jeff. And I, I, as I said, I'm really grateful that you shared that story, but even more importantly, that you just shared very transparently that, you know, like me, your spiritual journey isn't so perfect that you always obey, you know, and, and you, that you always obey with joy, because I know I sure don't. So as you look back over the course of your business and your career, what would you say is one of the bigger mistakes that you made uh, in your business or in your career? And, and what, what did God teach you in and through that? Man, there's a lot I've made, but I would say probably the biggest one, I think the one that came, comes to my mind when uh, I was thinking about this question uh, last night, the one, I think the biggest mistake I made, um, but I think now it's turned into a, um, a benefit. And I'll explain why. The biggest mistake I think is you know those mistakes that you that you make where you make the decisions where you realize, hey, if I make this decision, I'm going to lose some potential big income here. I mean, I'm going to lose some revenue. Yeah. Um, and I can think here, this goes back to the Christmas lighting business. This was three years ago. Um, well, actually, two, two, you know, two and a half, three years ago, I was sitting in this big storage unit. I mean, massive storage unit where I would used to store all the customer lights, garland, wreaths, lights i mean wire i mean just imagine you're almost like we had so much garland of wreaths from all these community associations we did it was like i was in a forest and i was sitting in there i said lord this is not what i envisioned this to be this is not what i was hoping this is going to be like for my for my family and even myself and i was and i was sitting there just basically enveloped mm -hmm. by all this greenery yeah i said lord i i can't store this anymore i got to do this I, I can't, I mean, I got to let go of this. And I was afraid to do it, right? Because I knew if I did that, I was going to lose some big time money. Yeah. I was yeah. estimating about twenty to $25,000. I mean, that's some big revenue for a small right. business. Right. And I just felt the Lord impress upon me, Jeff, you have to trust me. Let me do my work and quit grabbing on to things so tightly. You got to loosen up the grip. Because yeah. if you're trying to control it, you're not letting me be me. Yeah. So I said, okay, I'm going to do that. And then here's what happened. I ended up losing $25,000 in business the next year. But I will tell you, here's the most freeing thing that happened. When I got rid of all those Christmas lights, that, that particular job, I looked at that storage unit and the most freeing feeling came over me 
as I looked at that empty storage unit, I said, I don't have to worry about it anymore. Mm -hmm. Now giving God a chance to do what he wants to do in me. There you and, go. And here's what I learned is that regardless of how successful you are, whether you're rich, you're poor, whatever your background is. And for me, whatever poor choices I made, the sins I committed, the shame I had, whatever that is, um, he loves you today, yesterday, and forever, regardless of your choices. And so after doing that, I can tell you, here's what happened the next year. That's how Men Unplugged came about. It was almost like the Lord was saying, okay, I'm gonna, you got you to trust me, get, away, get this out of yeah. your head, get this out of your spirit, out of your heart, and now I want to do something bigger in you. Yeah. That's how it came about. That is so powerful. And as I'm listening, while on a different scale, recently uh, had a chance to interview uh, David Green, the founder of Hobby Lobby. And I'm, I'm actually not going to talk about, you know, the, er, what everybody knows that they're closed on Sundays and so forth. But just this past year, after however many years they've been in business, God laid on his heart to not sell products for Halloween. And it's a, I believe he said, a top five producing, you know, revenue and profit producing holiday the entire year through their Hobby Lobby stores. But he just really felt like God was telling him, I don't want you promoting and celebrating that holiday anymore, no matter how much revenue. Now, obviously their company is wildly successful and the scale of that decision compared to a $25,000 decision, that's not the issue. However, well, a little bit. But the issue is the principle, right? Because so are the consequences of a decision like that, because he's got thousands of employees and hundreds of stores and millions of customers that his decision rolled downstream, right? So it's kind of like, okay, if if that's 15% of our, I don't know what it is, but if it's 15% of our annual revenues, God, how are you going to replace that so that I can continue to pay my employees and take care of their families and grow the company to, so the point is, it doesn't matter whether it's a $25,000 decision or a $250 million decision. And by the way, I don't know the numbers on Mr. Green's decision, but the principle is the same. God was challenging you, right, Jeff, to say, listen, are you going to take what I'm prompting you and obey and trust me, or are you going to hold on to it? And then the blessing on the backside was you said you came away with freedom, that like some shackles had been removed and a, and like a breath of fresh air upon your business. Now, those, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but that's what I heard. That, is that about right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you do you do have to trust the Lord. You know how it says that he, he paves the way, he smooths out the path. You know, yeah. you have to trust him. Um, what is it, Proverbs 3, 5, 6, trust the Lord and, and all, with all your heart and lean not on your yeah. understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Yeah. And what I had to come to realize is that more times than not, the path that he's already smoothed out for you, it could be up there six months down the road. It could be a year or two, but we want that path to be smoothed out right now. And we want it in a certain way. And God's saying, wait, I got to get you to where I want you to go so that yeah. when you're on this path, you can soar like an eagle. Yeah. And, and that's what I had to finally realize is that the path, that I want to be on doesn't always match with the path that the Lord wants me to be on that's right. at that's that right. moment. And that's hard. Because, and, and for, for leaders, for your listeners, I mean, most of us, I would, I would bet a lot of your listeners are type A personalities. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm type triple A. So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, you want it done now and you want it done yesterday. And if it's not, you, you start struggling with that. You get impatient and uh, the trust, it just comes back to trust. And, can I go back to answering the question? I, I didn't answer the one question about the book. I want to make sure I get this. Is it? Can I do that? Sure, of course. Yeah. You talked about obstacles, and yeah. and you give the, some of the the reasons why a, a believer would say, you know, I don't know how mm -hmm. to. I I'm afraid of being rejected. All these different things. Um, those things I address in the book. In fact, I had all those fears and more. And what I discovered, Ray, and just talking, and I just did so much research on this. What I discovered is, is those are just symptoms that are, that are masking the root cause. The root cause is we're not learning how to witness. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so the book, Faith Without Fear, actually gives you 
the solution to that and gives you what I call the ultimate game plan, a step-by-step method that's going to step you through one particular um, conversation after the next so that whoever you're speaking with, you're going to be able to yeah. share your faith with confidence and power. So, and it does it in a very simple way. And I just, I want, I felt like I wanted to share that because I think for me, I think the, the one thing that the Lord wants us to get is that sharing the gospel is easy. It's easy when we know how to do it and we understand our role and we understand the Lord's role. To me, I think that's so big. That's fantastic. And Jeff, um, before we go on one more time, what's the best way for somebody to contact you, find out about your organization, your show or whatever? What's the simplest and best place for our audience to uh, check you out? I'll give you a, just go to menunplug.net. And then also you can send me an email if you want at jeff at men, jeff at menunplug.net. That'd be great. Okay. So men unplugged dot net or jeff at men unplugged dot net. Before I move on, I got two questions remaining here. But before we do that, folks, I'm going to do something. We, we've, uh, at this point in our history at Bottom Line Faith, I think we have uh, done maybe 160 conversations along the lines of what we're having with Jeff today. I'm going to do something today, Jeff, we've never done before. Okay, this is historic first. So if you're checking out this conversation and you're um, challenged and encouraged that you want to learn what it means uh, and how to be equipped to live out your faith in the marketplace, the first three people to email me, Ray, R-A-Y, at truthatwork.org, that's Ray at truthatwork.org, the first three individuals to email me with the request for a copy of Jeff's book, they're on me. I'm going to buy them. I'm not going to ask you to donate them, Jeff. I'm going to buy them from you. And folks, the first three, we've never done this before. I'm feeling like Bob Barker today. You know, the price is right. <laughs> the first three of you out there that email me and ask me to send you a copy, I will do that as my gift to you. But I'm not asking Jeff to donate these. Uh, so I'm going to pay for them out of my personal pocket. So if you email me and ask me for the book, I'm going to hold you accountable. You're going to read the book, and then we're going to have a conversation about what it means to live out your faith at work. So the first three to email me at ray at truthatwork.org. I'm going to send you a copy on my dime of Jeff's book. So, Jeff. Wow. And, hey, I'll hook you up on a discount for sure. So don't worry. Okay, that's up to you. I'm not asking. You know, this is a negotiation. No, that's great. (laughs) Man, that's, that's amazing. You know what? You know what that is right there? That's the right heart. I mean, we, I mean, just, I've, I've really enjoyed this conversation and just can tell that the Lord is just moving in you big time. I mean, not, not just today, but listen to other episodes you had and seeing what you guys are doing. Um, and there's just no doubt that, that God is doing some mighty stuff in and through what you guys are doing. I truly believe that. Well, thank you. That is so kind of you. So we're going to move on to the last section. I've just got a couple of questions left for you here, Jeff. And thank you. My goodness, thank you for investing your time in our audience here today. It's just been amazing. So I'm kind of going to shift last couple of questions in this area. I like to call just kind of my advice and insights section. So, Jeff, if you had a chance, you said earlier, I think you said you're 48, right? Okay. And if you had a chance to sit across the table from the 20-year-old version of you, and if you were confident that the 20-year-old you would listen to the 48-year-old you, what advice would you give? Well, I would, oh man, I would first take that dude aside and I would smack him around a lot. I mean, I really would. I was, <laughs> I was, I was, I was oh man, I was really messed up. I'm not saying I'm not messed up now, but I was really messed up then. Um, I would just, I would just, Say to say to that guy, say, "Hey, man, do you think what you're doing and the way you're behaving is cool? Do you really think that where you're going and uh, you're really going to make a difference in the direction that you're right now?" I mean, seriously. And then I would have said, "I would have said, look, brother, do you see the Bible you got in seventh grade? Pick it up, man. Read it, and then read it some more, and then apply it in your life." then you're going to know what living is all about. Hmm. Then you can truly be prosperous and successful in a way that honors God and encourages others. I think that's what I would say. Um, That would probably be the first thing I would say. I love it. I love it. It's, hey, man, is the way you're living cool and 
why don't you pick up that Bible you got 13 years ago and start reading it and see how God changes your life. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, if only the 20-year-old us would listen, right? <laughs> That's it. Why? Why do we think we have it figured out? I don't understand. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's right. That's exactly right. Well, well, Jeff, the last question, and our regular listeners here at Bottom Line Faith know that you know, I, I don't think I've ever missed an episode where this was my last question. Um, it's called my 423 question, where Solomon writes in Proverbs 4, verse 23, that above all else, guard your heart, for from it flows all of life. So, Jeff, I'd like you to fill in the blank as we wrap up our conversation here on Bottom Line Faith. What advice, what's that one piece of advice or word of encouragement that you'd like to leave in this conversation? Fill in the blank for us. Above all else... I would say above all else, flee. That's the word that comes to my mind, flee, F-L-E-E. In order to guard your heart, you have to do all that you can to keep it right knowing that we don't always do the right thing, but like David, if we want to do the right thing, then you know what? We are now in a position where God can do some amazing things through us and we can be the men and women that God has as his child. And then he can truly say to us, Hey, you're after my own heart as well. And it reminds me of, you know, John the Baptist. I mean, he, he didn't just, avoid temptation. He fleed it. He ran from it. I mean, he stayed away from it. And you think about it, Samson, he was able to avoid temptation for a while, but yet when he started hanging around it, the next thing you know, his leadership suffered. And so I would say as, as leaders, and I hope I'm saying this in, in an encouraging way, those who are following you, they're looking to you and when you're not avoiding temptation, whatever that is, okay, that manifests itself in different ways, you can be um, handcuffed. You can be put in this pit and then be labeled, and next thing you know, you're being ousted. And I would say we got to stay away from that. Uh, be above reproach in all things that you do so that you can continue to be that light that Jesus has given you. That is so powerful and so such good advice and counsel. Above all else, flee. Uh, I think that's another first here, bottom line faith, the roughly 160 conversations we've had. I think that is the first time that I have had it said, flee is the greatest piece of advice. And so, Jeff, that is absolutely fantastic. Jeff, I just can't thank you enough. Thank you so much for being our guest here at Bottom Line Faith. Uh, I hope that this was fun for you and an encouragement for you. I just can't thank you enough. Appreciate it, pal. Ray, I tell you what, it was a blast for me, man. I'm, I'm reeled from this, man. I'm psyched up and recharged. I'm ready to go get the next one for Jesus. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Awesome. <laughs> Well, folks, what an amazing conversation we just had with Jeff Jarena from the Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas area. I want to encourage you to check him out at unpluggedmen.org as or .net, unpluggedmen.net that he has shared with us. Uh, three or four takeaways real quick that I got from our conversation today is I loved how he talked about that God changes how we see ourselves. He told his story about a very tragic crash and the depression that he went through, but how God delivered him in and through that. Uh, he shared stories with us about your purpose in business may not always be for profit, and just keeping that in mind. I love those stories and examples that Jeff shared with us. You heard a historic first, an historic first here at Bottom Line Faith, so check out the free offer, the first three individuals to email me, ray at truthatwork.org. I'm going to send you a copy of Jeff's book, which is going to help you to be equipped. It's called Faith Without Fear, How to Share What You Believe with Confidence and Power. His book is going to train and equip you on how to evangelize in the marketplace. And I loved his last piece of advice that above all else, flee from sin. Folks, that's what we're about here at Bottom Line Faith is to equip you, to encourage you as a follower of Christ in business and in leadership in the marketplace to address eternal business and real life. I want to thank you for joining us on today's episode. And uh, just 
thank you so much for the encouragement that we continue to receive here at the program. We are seeing month after month continuous growth in our listeners and subscribers and our impact. We have international listeners now that are reaching out to us and uh, involved with what we're doing here at Bottom Line Faith. We couldn't do it without you. I just want to thank you. So go online, give a positive review, share this on your social media, all those wonderful things. Uh, You are why we do this program. I hope you've been encouraged today. So until next time, I am your host, Ray Hilbert, encouraging you to live out your faith every day in the marketplace. God bless. We'll see you next time. Bottom Line Faith is brought to you by Truth at Work. If you'd like to hear about new episodes or listen to past episodes, visit us online at bottomlinefaith.org. You can also subscribe to the show through Google Play and iTunes. 